about to go live. Hey, you, hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella. And as always, my partner in crime, believe it or not, he's still here. He's right, he's, he's right there. There he is. That's my partner in crime. And I'm John Jacobs. Sorry, I had a cat there issue, go, yeah. but I am here, John Jacobs, in the house. Cats are treacherous beasts, and he had to go tame one. So here's to you, good sir. Now, I'm just trying to keep him out of the room so that you don't see doors open and close and think there's a ghost in here. Because yeah. <laughs> that sometimes happens. Yeah, well, you know, it, or, or it, cats always have that weird thing where, like, they stare at you from a far distance, like some jaded cop who's still a cop for the pension. Like, you know, just like he's angry about it. He's like, one day, you know. But anyways, it's good to have everybody on the show. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, the Obi Wan Kenobi show that has premiered on Disney Stars or Disney Plus. I, it, trust me, they're going to have all kinds of. I bet they're going to have branch off on many channels. Anyways, so before we start, mm. make sure you uh, like and subscribe wherever you're watching our uh, show and share it because sharing is caring and it gets more uh, word about our show out there. And uh, as always, uh, like I said, we, we're here every Wednesday, 7 o'clock. And today, what we're going to be talking about with re regards to the Ben Kenobi show, I call him Ben because it's like, this is, mm. I love how he like, covers it up. He's like, I'm Ben. And they're like, oh, it's okay. He's just Ben, he, even though he looks like the wanted poster. But one of the things I do like about this is we're going to talk about the twins. We're going to talk about the Inquisition. I, I keep thinking of the song, The Inquisition. What a show. But we're going to talk about the Inquisitors. Uh, then we're also, finally, we're going to talk about uh, the big battle that we've been wanting to see. Mm. Is, we, <laughs> and it delivered. We're talking about it. We're going to talk the whole second half of the show. But let's just be honest right now. It delivered. That it delivered. delivered. If, if it delivered. nothing else in the show delivered, that delivered. Well... Speaking of delivering, let's get, oh. let's bring out our guest who is always known to deliver. He's a hysterical comic, and uh, you've seen him on uh, Nickelodeon Arcade. Man, this guy is a living legend. <laughs> he is and a he's legend. Our show, uh, gratefully, he's done our show numerous times, and he's back. Please give it up for Phil Moore, everybody. Phil Moore. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Hey, hold up. What? Oh, oh, it's me. now. Oh, it's it's now. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's now. It's now. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Hey. There he is. What's up, Phil? <laughs> you look like you were in the middle of a big battle. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, what people don't know is when they start the show, we all say hey to each other, and then they go, okay, we're going to put you backstage. That means my picture goes away. And they just keep talking. I got bored. But it's <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it's good to see you again, John and Jesse. And uh, uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to talk some, uh, you know, Obi Wan. I am too. Definitely. I think we're all ready. Obi Wan for it. has taught you well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, though. That's the big question. Anyways, Jesse, let's start us off here. What are we going to start talking about first? Give us our first topic. We're ready. Well, before we uh, get into it, let's uh, catch up with Phil right now. Let's see oh. what he's been up to and what projects he's been working on. You know. We miss you, Bill. We're always we're big fans of yours. Well, you know what, guys? That's why I jump in whenever I can. And uh, uh, most of the time, uh, you guys are on when I'm busy working. It just so yes. happens that uh, right now, um, I don't know if any of you, if your your viewers, have ever heard of this YouTube phenomenon named Mr. Beast. Yes. And I'm in North Carolina right now, and I'm here. Been here for a while. I'll be here for a couple more months producing some content for. Uh, the one and only, and, and it's wow. been a lot of fun. And uh, so, so fortunately, I'm on the East Coast time. So yeah. normally, when you guys go on live, yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm working, but now I'm off because it's seven o'clock at night. And uh, so I'm glad. I'm glad that I'm geographically misplaced so yeah. that I can sit up here and talk in your face. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And uh, and we are getting some love from uh, Mr. Ryan Francis. Hello, What's up, from Ryan? Ohio. What what? All right, man. Good to see. You. What's up, Ryan? How you doing, man? It's good to good to see you. Ryan's uh, doing in the building at the film. table again. It's good to see you at the table. <laughs> I'm, uh, so, I'm at, I'm so, at the kids' table right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Filled at the kids' table. I What's love it. That's kids so table? great. That's so I'm great. Surprised yeah. you're not playing three card money on that. <laughs> well, you know, I was, I was I was playing something else. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so th that sounds really awesome, uh, 
creating content with Mr. Beast? Is there like any specific type of content that you're creating? Uh, is it of the comedy nature or is it something uh, outside your realm? Well, it's um, it's a little, it's a little bit of both. Like, I mean, okay. uh, you know, they, he does these crazy cool challenges. They just did one where they created the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory live. So that was a fun one to do. Um, there's a, 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 a I can't, oh, I can't say that. Can't yeah, say careful. That. Don't he's, mostly, NDA, he's, mostly, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. he's mostly, he's mostly known for like the, the re -endor, redoing the Squid Game live, which was awesome. But we yeah. just did the Willy Wonka one uh, live. Uh, and uh, the thing that's really cool about it, a lot of it is just execution, but then a lot of it is coming on like, well, how do we take this, whatever the, the, the idea is, and how do we beast it up? You know right. what I mean? How yeah. do we take a normal idea? Because then normally for me, coming up with stuff that I do for game shows is coming up with a fun little stunt or something that's crazy. But like Mr. Beast takes that and goes, great, this is crazy. This is out of the box. This is insane. And now... How do we beast it up? There you go. How do we remember, remember Transformers Beast Wars is like, here's a cool little game. Beast <laughs> mode. You know, and so that's uh that's just really cool. Uh that's so awesome. I got, I'm Glad looking at something right fun. now and uh I can't even talk about it, or else uh, you know, the chip in the back of my neck will go and I'll be like suicide squad. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we totally understand. Great reference too. We totally but, uh, but man, it, it's it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And working in the YouTube space, uh, you know, it's great to get away from the normal system, TV mm -hmm. system, the Hollywood system, the LA system, to being on the East Coast working with some people that are just extremely talented. And just when I stop and go, well, what about rice and clearances? They're like, we got no rice and clearances. I'm like, all right. <laughs> it's like it's like, hey. Full frontal fill. Let's just do it. Let's oh, I love it. it. Full frontal <laughs> fill. That's great. So, uh, let me let me ask you this. Um, you know, I always, anytime I get to work with a different performer, I always try to find something about them or whatever it is, and as a way to bring it back into what I do. You know what I mean? Like, kind of like you know, each is learned. Is there something that you've uh, picked up in your experience working with Mr. Beast thus far that you're like, ooh, I like this. I got to start doing this with my stuff. Um, the biggest thing is, well, and listen, I would love to do, here it is. The thing is, he wants it to be authentic, mm. which is so different than, look, for, for the reasons that are absolutely necessary, when you work in television, you've got to make sure that everything is, you've got to get the shot, everything is lined up correctly. Sometimes it means going back and doing another take. Mm. But because it's almost like a merging of two worlds. He's got a huge platform, like a television audience, but they still sort of do it run and gun, like some first year, you know, film students that don't have permits. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's the yeah. thing that's really cool. The idea of being able to do it on this level, but know that it's run and gun. And it's, it's something that I always like to do on my regular jobs back in LA. But most of the time you've got to conform to the director going, wait, let's do it again. Can we reset it? This is like, you get what you get. It's almost like performing live, except yeah. it's not. Um, but 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 that also like keeps you on your toes to make sure you have everything set up. Cause when the gag goes boom and it flip to do and it flip, it's got to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Um, which is exciting. It's like it's like it's like being a live performer, except you're actually, you know, filming it for for YouTube. So uh, I would love to be able to continue to do that when I go back home, just to be able to kind of go, look, let's set it up, let's do it. We get what we get. And 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 it's normally in those weird moments where something really doesn't go right, that's where you find that goal. It's like why improv comics is so yep. great. Like something happens, you didn't plan, and then you're into a bit that wasn't written, and it, it's gold. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's uh, that's really awesome. And uh, one last question: When uh, when can we pop, when will this premiere? When will we be able to see it and see you rocking well, you your stuff look, on there? You you can look at this. You, you can look at the channel right now. I think the 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 very first project that I did last month. I think they're going to drop it like within the next couple of weeks. Oh, okay. Um, um, uh, and I I don't want to give away what oh, it yeah, is, no. but but let me just say this. Already on his on the Mr. Beast channel, there is a video called "A uh, Hundred People in a Circle." All right. <laughs> okay, so yeah. so we just did one that takes that concept and blows it up even bigger. So when people people will know what it is that I'm talking about when it drops. But even if I say the name of it, it might give away something. Oh, all, yeah, yeah. all you know is the next time you see a thing on there, a new video that talks about circle and people 
know that that's the first one I worked on. So Perfect. Like, I can't wait to watch it. And I hope there everyone you have checks it. out. Circle and people. Look for those Circle keywords. and people. Yeah. <laughs> Big round people. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, right. let's get into our first topic of the night. Uh, let's to let's do some twin talk. Uh, we got Leia and Luke. Um, mm. Luke, we haven't seen since mm. uh, the Mandalorian, and I'm not talking about time chronologic. I'm talking about from when you know last time on film. Right. Yeah, and then you know Leia, we haven't seen since the uh, the the incident which we refer to as the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so. So what was your experience with seeing the twins again? Do you think it was a positive um, one? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, I like the fact that, look, a lot of people have been complaining about, man, we always have to go to Tatooine. No, the story ended on Tatooine. Did you know the show you were tuning in to see? I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. he drops off the twins. A new hope opens up on Tatooine. Obi-Wan's been the hermit. Hello there. So when they... <laughs> What are these people going, everything's good to be on Tatooine? Maybe if, like, Ahsoka goes to Tatooine, you can say that. Maybe a Mandalorian, you can say that. But dog on it, this is where it starts. This yeah. is the beginning of A New Hope. Where do you expect them to be, Vegas? I mean, this is ridiculous. So, <laughs> Shoot, I, first of all, so I like being back on Tatooine. I'm sorry I had to go on that tangent because I'm. <laughs> it, it blows my mind when people are always complaining about that. I, if I it's relevant and it's supposed to be, mm -hmm. then let's let's be there. Yeah. Um, but but the thing that I really like the most, first of all, I didn't really, I almost didn't want to see Luke, and I'm glad that they delivered minimalist Luke. Mm -hmm. because, I, I so agree. I agree. Because we don't know Jack about Leia. That, yeah. And that's what I really love. That and, and I didn't see that coming. Like, I'm so glad, like, nobody got, like, a you know, got, got a spoiler, and, and nobody leaked that, oh, this is going to be mostly about Leia. When I saw Luke, and I saw the scene when I'm, like, you know, doing his pod racing, and I'm like, hey, what are we going to do? And I'm like, and I kept thinking, because <clears throat> when we see Luke in The New Hope, uh, 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 it's like he, he barely knows Ben Kenobi. And the right. one thing that is really... I'm really cautious about with all of these shows, all of the Disney Plus shows is, and this is goes out to, look, I hope that all of the big Hollywood producers and directors are watching the Gronos table. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it's where they should be right now. But, Kathleen Kennedy is watching right now. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing that's driving me nuts. And this, I'll get back to, to Leia. I, I, I don't like the fact that they've tried to Jedi mind trick us into thinking we didn't see the original trilogy. You said some things, you've done some things. We know what they say they've experienced. Yes. We know what they know. We know who they are. So you can't just all of a sudden do a prequel or a sequel yep. that kind of makes you go, well, wait now, how did they know that if they, because he never talked about knowing, you know what I mean? So yep. this, it was really good to see them not mess with Luke because I kept thinking, what are they going to establish with Luke that for some reason he just didn't talk about ever again? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. if, he, if, if, if like Obi-Wan Kenobi was his soccer coach, then why did he act all weird when he met him in the new home? And I was hoping that that this show wouldn't stop and go, Luke, are you ready to score the goal? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I just see Ben Kenobi just hammered drinking right now. He's like hammered on like, oh, no. It's actually like a white Russian. <laughs> Luke, use the force, not your hands. I mean, you know, while he's like juggling the soccer ball with his knees. <laughs> yeah. So they, they, these shows keep doing things like that, and you keep saying to yourself, "Well, wait." Then, but they didn't know that. In in a new hope, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, The Last Jedi. You know, like you can't just drop it in and act like, oh, they just decided not to chat about it. So, with that said, it was cool seeing, you know, you know, preteen Luke, ten year old Luke. Hey. But then we deviated to Leia, and I was like, wow, I did not. See That's the thing I didn't know I wanted that I absolutely needed. So, um, so the the little bit of Luke that we saw was perfect. And um, and then finding out things about Leia was perfect. So my Luke and Leia, the way they were depicted in this, the minimalist Luke and the maximalist Leia was perfect twinage for me. Yeah. 
So let me jump in because I do agree with you, Phil, but I think kind of how I felt in my opinion deviates a little bit too. So did I like the twins? Yes. Did I like that it was minimal Luke more Leia? Absolutely. Did I feel like they needed to be in this series? No, because I think it distracts from what's happening. And I, I, I can't help but think it's just this this Emperor Palpatine plan of let me kidnap Leia and then she's going to call out to Obi-Wan and then he's going to come to this specific planet and then I'm going to corner him and I'm going to kill him. And it's like... Ugh. I, I kind of felt that that was just really, it was really heavy in terms of me being able to accept well, it. I think I, another thing that bothered me a little bit was that, um, so, you know, <sighs> oh, hold on. I'm getting a delay. Are, are you guys oh, hearing me live? Yeah, or yeah, we're, 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 yeah, we're hearing this delay. Okay. okay. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. So, you know, <sighs> in episode four, Uncle Owen is not a fan of Obi-Wan. He's like, that, that man's just a crazy wizard. Stop listening to him. And Luke, <laughs> and, and, and Luke is just like, I wonder if he means old Ben. And it's like, but then at the end, they meet and they have a moment. And then Owen's nice to Obi-Wan. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, in the first episode, it was wonderful. I wanted more of Owen and Obi-Wan in the first episode because Owen was giving him shit constantly. Yeah. And then yeah. when it came down to brass tacks, Owen still hid obi-wan he didn't break he didn't give him up so you can tell that his frustration towards obi-wan is more i don't want luke wrapped up in this shit but i also respect you and what you essentially did for my extended family so i'm not gonna sell you out i don't hate you i just don't want you to bring this kid into it because he's got nothing to do with it even though he does i'm good with that but introducing obi-wan to luke at the end i'm just like that blows that whole conversation over the blue milk and then bringing leia into it is that you know and i've seen some theories where people try to close this hole in the canon but it still bothers me is that if you're reaching out to obi-wan because your dad told you this guy was an awesome general back in the clone wars you know he helped me this and that you reach out to him you're talking about that if you were 10 years old and you were kidnapped and you were brought to another planet and held hostage and a jedi broke you out and you went on this four episode excursion that included being locked up on one of like vader's strongholds and a bunch of snow speeders came in and like shot everybody up and like you got rescued don't you think you would reference that in your message to obi-wan like hey remember when i was 10 and you helped me yeah kind of need it again so it bothers me because obviously the first film was written and there there was no there was no guarantee that other films were going to be written yeah so the content is where it is. And I get we're filling stuff in, but it's like you didn't watch the movies when you wrote this one to make sure the stuff fit in. And that just bothered me. I feel like it wasted time that we could have been focusing on Anakin and Obi-Wan, which is what everybody wanted to see. And instead we got like three and a half, four episodes of these kids. And I don't know. It just it that's where it fell flat for me. While I still liked it, I feel like they could have just done a different series with the kids. Like, do a different series. We only got six episodes, and we wasted so much screen time. I don't know. That's how I felt about it. All right. What, what, what were you, Jesse? Because I have some things to say about that. I know you do. <laughs> yeah. All I was going to say is that, like, I feel like it isn't too big of a hole. I mean, yeah, it stands out. But, like, I mean, the, here's the thing. When I ask someone for help, the last thing I do is I'd be like, hey, remember the first time I fucked up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you owe me. <laughs> I, you know, like, it's not gonna look. Hey, you remember that time I ran into the woods because I wanted to be a little rebel? Right. This time, instead of it me being kidnapped, it's a war, and the main guy is pissed. Like, so I mean, I mean, and, and also, I guess, like, you know, I, I think it was just like a quick voicemail. Like, you ever, you ever just leave a voicemail with somebody like? Hey guys, I'm in trouble. Just give me a call back. Sorry, bye. <laughs> right, right. All right, exactly. Okay, so like, here's here's my take on what what you said, John. Okay, yeah. Because uh, I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning in the direction of Jesse over here. Okay, I know you. Couple, it's okay. It, okay. Well, here's the, no, it's okay. Great, exactly. Um. Uh. Okay, so here's where my take on on both of those things. Number one, I think about it realistically uh, through the mind of a kid. Okay. Okay. How many times? Now I want everybody to think back to when they were like a grown up. And then 
drunk uncle comes in and they go, hey, remember uncle so-and-so? He was in the joint. He met you when you were like an embryo. Remember him? And you're like, hell no. I don't remember you. Or, yeah, I vaguely remember you. You smell like tobacco. That's what I remember. Or you smell like, you know, Jim Bean. Or, uh, yes, you're the one that let me take a puff of your joint, whatever. But you don't remember. <laughs> that cool uncle. <laughs> the cool uncle. But you don't remember, like, all the details. People come up to me. Look, kids come up to me. And let me, and I'm going to reverse it because I'm a grown-up. And, yep. you know, when I worked on Nickelodeon, it was a bunch mm -hmm. of kids. Now people come out to like conventions and things that I do and they go, oh my gosh, I remember I was on your show and you uh, backstage signed my shirt. Do you remember? And I'm like, no, no, I <laughs> don't. And I'm a grown man and I was a grown man then. So now yeah. I'm thinking about children who meet people and it sounds that like, like, like Owen is going to keep him as far away from Kenobi as possible, and maybe they see them. And I'm also thinking about like the the uh, the rhetoric that must be spoken with uh, spoken at, at home, because obviously Owen doesn't really care for Obi Wan for all of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So if the name comes up, hey, that nice guy, I bet you every single day Owen goes, shouldn't have let that bastard give him that toy. Every day, <laughs> that's it. You're right. You're absolutely every right. Let him day. In. Because so now he's got to downplay that yep. old crazy wizard guy. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that's my first point. As a kid, yes, you may have met him. You may have met him only once. You may have seen him off in the distance. And 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 if you saw him doing something, let's say like five years from now, uh, Obi Wan is doing something, and and maybe he's in. If if there were a season two, and Luke happens to say, "Hey, isn't that that guy?" Yeah, he's doing something crazy. He's got the he's got Jedi Alzheimer's. Let's go. And so, Jedi <laughs> oh my god, that's the hashtag of the show, right there, folks. <laughs> hashtag Jedi Alzheimer's. Yeah. So, so he's, he's so Owen's going to do everything he can to downplay. Sure. Obi Wan. Sure. Ben. Okay, so that's the first point to address what you're saying. As a child, and even as a grown man, people come up to me I met nine years ago, one time, and I've got the littlest memory about it. I might remember them, I might go, oh, yeah, I remember, it's gotta be something really that stands out to make me, make me uh, remember you. If I only met you one time, nine years ago. So that's the first thing. So when you go, I wonder if you're talking about that Ben Kenobi, you know, because, you know, yeah, I wonder if I met that guy. I, I vaguely remember this guy. And why do I remember Ben Kenobi? Oh, he's the guy that gave me that cool toy. That's why he goes, oh, Ben Kenobi. Yeah, he's the dude that gave me the cool toy that my uncle keeps calling an ass. Um, <laughs> and so so that's, that's addressing it. And then the, the second thing is with respect to Leia, okay, let's, let's put on our war thinking caps. This is like where Jesse was going, okay? The war thinking caps. This message could be intercepted. This message could be captured and not gotten to whoever it needed to be. So you want to okay. you want to code that message as much as you can. You want to shroud it. You want to tip your own your hand because here's the thing: if if the, if the message had been intercepted and never got to where it needed to be, you don't want Leia spilling all giving all the dish about the past. <laughs> It's not relevant. Yeah. It's like in case in case somebody grabs this, in case the Empire intercepts this. Um, hey, guy that I know, you know, have you ever been, <laughs> have you ever been like some like? And I, I'll tell you exactly a, a, a cool example. When you're in a car, I've been in situations where I'm in conversations with somebody, and I know, like, look, I'll tell my friend, "Hey, look, um, this guy right here. Oh my gosh, he talks his ear off. He's always a downer. He brings me down. I, I don't want to be." Um, impolite to him but if you know this guy doesn't know when to cut it off so i tell you what five minutes from now come in here and and and, and give some weird excuse for me to go off so he doesn't come in and go hey phil what's up my buddy how you doing man? You, the best? you told me to roll up in it he's gonna come in and go uh sir i think uh the, uh, the ballet needs, needs to see about your car and i'll go okay cool and then when i get around the corner i'm like thanks dog man i appreciate that he's not gonna come in and spill the dish like we know each other. We're doing a covert maneuver. Covert. Covert maneuver. Sure. I don't. <laughs> so I get what you're saying, and that was one of the theories that I looked at. And I don't want to spend a lot more time. Phil, you and I can talk. 
you know, off camera, uh, like we typically do on these things. <laughs> but, um, you know, my what I'll say just in the interest of time, because we do have other topics we want to get to, is that I I hear what you're saying. But my thing is, is that we're starting with a conclusion in Obi-Wan and we're working backwards and things that already exist saying, oh, yeah, well, I can point this out. And yeah, that connects with that. So it, it we're good. It just bothers me. It it bothers me that there there wasn't a more thought out bridge. And if there was, that's what they chose to bridge. And it just seemed weak to me. I felt like we could have been stronger. We could have been much more specific and not kind of gone down this this hole because to me it, it does leave some some holes and things to be desired. So, um, you know, but like I said, you know, I I definitely want to uh, keep going. I don't want to, you know, we we got Obi Wan and Vader to talk about for the vast majority of this show. But you know, it sounds like we all did like the twins. We just have a different opinion on the screen time and and their relevancy to the story. But mm -hmm. I will say I love the actress that played Leia. She played that character great. And look. I love Jimmy Smith. Get him on there. I'll support him every time. Mm -hmm. And I loved seeing Alderaan not in pieces because mm -hmm. we've only seen Alderaan in SWOTOR. And if you've never played SWOTOR, you have no idea what Alderaan fucking looks like. So now you finally get to see what it looks like. And I want to live there. It looks like a great yeah. place to live until it got blown up. So. Also, you know what, though? I feel like Luke got the short end of the stick. It was like, like I always you, take, that you, take, you take a set of twins and you're yeah. like, okay, listen, I'm yeah. going to hide you at Disneyland. Right. Okay. Okay. And then, and I'm gonna hide you at Five Nights at Freddy's. Right. 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 <laughs> I love the opposite spectrum on where the end go. It's crazy. That's so wrong. I, you know, I wouldn't mind if they just digitally remade a scene from the original Star Wars, and they just had. Uh, Luke and Leia's like, so what have you been up to the last uh, 20 years? <laughs> oh, I've like, been partying. Oh that. my gosh, we having raves over here. A backstage. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that, see that thing, that phallic tower over there? That's where the regular weekly orgies go now. What about you, Luke? <laughs> It's like hero sand, gasm, if anybody's seen the most recent episode of the boys. course. It gets yeah. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I always oh. noticed that, too, and I'm glad you picked that up on that. But uh, we, let's move. We'll uh, head on to our next topic. Hey, look, worst case scenario, they mind wipe her. Continuity is fixed. If we, Again, if it, that's like the Superman <laughs> kissing Lois to wipe her memory. It's like, well, we can't write anything better, so let's just do this. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Like, I didn't say it was a good idea. I just said it's an idea. <laughs> it's a MacGuffin. That's right. what it's a MacGuffin. It is. It is. I know we're going to get to this in the oh. third act about, um, but I, I do want to um, mention something that I wish they had done. Now, and I wish oh. this. I know we got to get to the next topic, but yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 but um, something happens later on, which you know, and I don't want to get to it right now, where it's, it sort of explains Obi Wan's comment about like you know, um, Vader did kill your dad from a point of view. Okay, mm -hmm. they kind of. Mm -hmm. I wish I was hoping I was crossing my fingers that the other little plot hole they would fill is to have maybe Obi Wan like touch her head and give her some memory of Padme. So that when she, when Leia later on says, when Luke goes, do you remember your mother? And she says, ah. that would have been great. I wish yeah. they had done that because yeah. that was like, I was waiting for them to fix that hole. But anyway, go ahead. Move on. Oh, I like that. You're thinking, Phil. I like is, it. Uh, hey, we could have, you never know what they, you know, with Hugh McGregor's performance and people's oh, demand to have, um, I'm blank. Uh, I'm blanking his name. Uh, the guy who played Vader. They want him back. So Hayden, Hayden Christensen. Yeah. Hey, yeah. So I mean, it, it's pretty obvious he'll they'll do something. But yeah. let's get on to the next thing. There the we Inquisition. go. Let's talk about the Inquisitors. The Inquisition. That's what the a show. Inquisition. Here we go. <laughs> Jesse, do you mind if I start us off on this? Yes. Yes, you may. Okay. So it's going to be a little ranty, but I'm going to go quick. So did I like the Inquisitors? Yeah, they were dope. I loved their outfits. I loved all their personalities. I loved all their unique sabers. Like, I love how they were just ruthless badasses. Like, I loved it. But again, I'm sorry, I, just, I, I'm sorry. I keep thinking oh. that was your stripper name in college. <laughs> this is gonna be ranty, but quick. Please this welcome is to the gonna stage. Be ranty, but quick. Please Not welcome to the stage. Dollars. Ranty, but quick. I love it. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Like the little Chippendale bow tie and cuff links. <laughs> and the, the little coin purse. You know, holding the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, we, we got time. Go. I'm sorry, man. Go on, John. <laughs> so, 
I thought it was really cool because I like to see this whole hunting of the Jedi. We've always wanted to see this since what was it, episode one or episode four, when Obi Wan's like Vader and the the Empire hunted down the Jedi, and we're always like, I want to fucking see that. So we got to see the people who hunted the Jedi. We didn't get to see hunting at the Jedi, which again I, I would really like to see. But we got to see the hunting of Obi Wan, and you know the Inquisitors were dope. Everybody agrees. But again, I feel like they should have had their own series because it's just it's distracting when you have major plots with major characters and you're trying to focus on one. But now you got to focus on kids. Now you got to focus on Inquisitors. Now you got to focus over here. And it's like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And I loved Reva. I thought she was awesome. But I'm a little miffed at the at, at what's happening here. And I get that people get fucked up when traumatic things happen to them. I understand. So if you're 10 years old, you're chilling at the Jedi Temple, you're doing your lightsaber training, you're hanging out with Yoda, maybe Mace Windu comes down to say what's up, and then some asshole kicks the door down and just starts murking everybody. Like, I get it. And you're a 10-year-old kid. You're watching all your people get murdered in front of you. And then you got kids, and the kids are getting murdered, and then you get murdered. But you don't die. And you wake up, and you're like, wow. I'm the only one left alive. Oh, by the way, Grogu survived. We don't know who the fuck he is because the Mandalorian didn't exist back then. So never mind. I'm the only one that survived. And you then create this plan where you are going to join the dark side so that you can kill other Jedi that were trying to keep your ass alive that was a part of your family and you loved just so that maybe 15 years down the road at this exact time, you can get Darth Vader by himself, you know, the guy, he's number two in this whole thing. And you're going to then kill him and get your revenge. And I'm just like, what? Like, and, and, and I get it. You're clouded. You're, you're only thinking of the revenge invader and you don't care who you kill. But the people you're hunting down and killing are your own people. And it just didn't sit well with me. And then I feel like they fizzled her out at the end. It's like, oh, never mind. I'm good. Oh, uh, hey, Luke, what's going on? Let me just ride off into the sunset. And <laughs> okay, cool. Let's get an Inquisitor show. Let's follow up with Reva. I'm all about it. I want that. But in Obi-Wan, I, I just, again, I just feel like that whole thing was a distraction from what we were there to see. Thoughts? I agree. The shortest answer I'll ever give. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I, mean, I'm I'm yeah. Like I am, Phil. I, so <laughs> I know you got more to say. No, no, really. That, I, I really have nothing else to add. Um, uh, I felt the same way, too. They, they introduced uh, these characters. Um, it, it seemed because, because the other thing that we know happens is they, they established the Inquisitors to go around and hunt Jedi. But we also know, and this is my own thought, I haven't read a lot of the Star Wars books, that somewhere along the way, in my opinion, I think Darth Vader went, okay, it's, it's only going to be one and two, so I got to get rid of all of you. I think that somewhere down the road, they all, because they're all gone by the time a new hope happens. Mm. So in nine years, we go from Inquisitors hunting Jedi yeah. to no one left except no one those except two. Yoda. <laughs> what a, exactly what a great story like the you know the hunt for red inquisitors that's what we should be watching um I love it. And, the hunt and, for red and, inquisitors. and trying to squeeze them in they just introduced them and yeah. and, 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 and i'm going to throw this out and then i'll, I'll just, you know, pass the baton to jesse um there are too many things that happened in this because story had to happen yes in this show Yes, I got so fed up that we're not even on a bunch of the topics that fit that, but just so many things. Like, I understand the Inquisitors. Um, I, I, I like them as the motivating factor for getting Obi Wan off of Tatooine. Sure, absolutely, totally agree. But, totally. but I almost think like if they want to like wet our whistle for maybe a season two or for them to appear in other series, that less could have been more. Yeah. As opposed to sure. really building them up only to like, you know, not really get into their story. And can I just add one more thing before Jesse speaks here? Um, they have collectively the Disney era of Star Wars, and I'm saying it out loud, and if they mm. send you stuff, I don't care, have <laughs> ruined lightsabers. Because you didn't remember, like the remember, 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 lightsaber? remember, remember, remember in um uh, the incredible syndromes goes, hey, if everybody's super, then no one is, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. People now get killed with lightsabers 
but they're not dead. Uh, so I kind of look at them as a, I might as well be fighting with a water bottle. When somebody gets, <laughs> to this day, when somebody gets stabbed with a lightsaber, I just kind of go, so? You can get cut in half with a lightsaber. So? It's kind of like it's it's kind of like watching The Rock in a movie. We I don't know if y'all know this, but yeah. the, the Rock the Rock has a clause for those people who don't know. The Rock has a clause in his in his contract that he can never lose a fight. Oh, I, so I don't that. Oh. I don't like watching The Rock in a film because I know he's not going to lose. Yeah, good point. Very good. Ben point. Diesel has the same one as well. Right. So now when I see somebody pull out a lightsaber and they hold it up, I'm, I don't go, ooh, I wonder if they're going to die. I'm like, ooh, I wonder if they're going to get robot parts and come back later. <laughs> but I digress. Jesse. No, I, yeah. I, I think I think that hurts uh, the land of fiction that we try to be in when we know those certain things do exist. Now, I, I understand what you're saying with that. And, and with the Inquisitioners, I mean, that, there is a lot that they put in in such a short amount of time with this show, you know, like I think it may be, maybe like not have the whole gang of them, you know, maybe at least like Reva and then her partner who's like a senior, and, like something. I is think the having, senior, is he the senior manager of the team? Like <laughs> he's the same guy, guy from Office. This guy, <laughs> he's the same guy from Office Space where he's like. You don't have enough flair on you. Right, right, right. <laughs> the manager Stan. I'm only yeah. doing 15 pieces. Yeah, <laughs> she's, she's like, like, she's like the intern. Like that, she's the intern that wants the, the corner office. And um, yeah. but the yeah. but the whole plot was sort of weird. That's why I agree with, with what John said. It's like, okay, let me get you straight. You're gonna commit black on Jedi crime. Right. All right, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and I love then, that, Bill. Great, great <laughs> phrase. And, and then, and then, as you're doing this, your whole purpose is to get close to the person that employed you to kill them. And I keep going. At no point in time have you ever been around Vader when you had a better opportunity to try to take him out. So you're going to go ahead and kill your own, okay? So that you could kill the guy that hired you to kill your own, right? Because he's tried to kill you earlier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I, I understand I, wanting to kill the guy to try to kill you, yeah. but you're now going to do their bidding and kill right. other innocent people. Right. I agree. You are now, you are now Vader. And then eventually she saw yeah. that. But come on, girl, it took you nine years to see that? Right, right, right. And then you just kind of walk off into the sunset. Um, now, they need a I'll, little David Banner Hulk music playing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I want to expand real quick, real quick on what you were talking about where now, so we're establishing things in star Wars where you die and you don't die. And I think it's funny that we can stab one person in the stomach and they totally live, but then we stab Qui-Gon in the stomach and he dies. We cut Darth Maul in half and he survives. We shock the shit out of Luke with electricity and he doesn't die. But Vader touches the electricity, and then he does die. And I'm just like, we, we need a little consistency here, because there's other problems that, that have come up, too. In Star Wars, if you're in an explosion, you're fucking dead. But if you fall down a pit, you're probably not dead. If you're no. having a fight with someone, and the fight just ends because the other person thinks you're going to die... You're not going to die. You're going to live. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I just need a little consistency with the lightsabers here. Because right, right. I'm already miffed about Qui-Gon's cameo being wasted. And yeah. then I think about it more, and I'm like, wait a minute. Anakin, who was at the peak of Darth Vader, because he wasn't in the suit yet, so he was optimal performance, mm -hmm. is in the Jedi Temple with four dozen clone troopers, just straight up murdering Massacre, everybody right. flawlessly you stab this one girl and you're just like i'm moving on like wait a minute what what is right. happening here right. like right. anakin is fucking thorough because right. after he leaves the jedi temple he goes to mustafar and slaughters every separatist 
no right. one survives. Right. So he let this little kid survive? Come on. Right. So, and look, I, mean, I, want, I want to address uh, uh, Vance right here, making the comment about, yeah, and he also left her, stabbed her, Vader left her, stabbed her on a planet with no ride, and she beat Kenobi home. Yeah. That reminds me of Bruce Wayne in, in, in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. Like, how do you get back to Gotham? Right. You got no credit card? <laughs> right. I'm you right. broke? You know, creditors are calling you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yet creditors you get the call Bruce Wayne. And then you got the Gotham. And then she, she got no ride. She got no. She got a big hole in her gut. But somehow she got fixed. She put yeah. some Neosporin on her. Right. Just back. <laughs> she called. Spray. She Fix called it. Space Uber. Yeah, listen. <laughs> listen, I, 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 can you? I just need to get the Tatooine. Right. You know, I'm like, what did you? Yeah. Vent, way to go, Vance. Yes. Good Wouldn't that have been some shit if she hopped a ride on the Millennium Falcon to get back to Tatooine? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Han and Chewie got stuck there for the next Because it all has to connect. Yeah. So here, here's a thought real quick. I mean, I won't spend too much time on this at all. Like, if the saber stabs into you, wouldn't it almost, like, cauterize the wound a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of the idea. That, you yeah. know, that's so, how I mean, like, ride in his hand. But if, you, but if you hit a vital organ... If you put a hole right. in my oh, liver, yeah, yeah. or right. a hole You're in my heart, or a hole in my in my in my my in my ad in my intestine, yeah. you know, like there's certain things that um, if they get damaged bad enough, you're done. But they've taken yeah. away the mystery. It's, it's no more. There's no more mystery to having a lightsaber anymore. Well, and, and then we could just do the thing from Rise of Skywalker. We just keep healing each other until the first person runs out of energy, and then that's the one that dies. There right, you go. Right. It, and I love the, I love your point that like I mean, everybody else died, but we gotta get ghosty qui Gon. Right. Dude, you know uh, Jesse, I mean, why we... why didn't why didn't Obi-Wan Kenobi goes, what hang on, Padawan, wait, Padawan uh, uh Obi-Wan go, oh wait, wait Pat, Master, I've got some Neosporin <laughs> spray on you. <laughs> I'm telling you, back the spray, it's like back and it, the... right. And he and he puts it and I got a, I got an back iPhone. The... Let me stick that up in that hole. <laughs> and let's get back to the Jedi Temple. <laughs> Let's get back to the temple. We got shit to do. <laughs> Which one of the things I want to bring up, John said, is like the Anakin is thorough. He would have checked to make sure all the yeah, things were dead. He's not yeah, leaving no. people surviving. Come on. So all I can imagine was him with his lights. They were going. Zzz. And this is what I mean when I say <laughs> it's getting to the point where these shows, especially this one, they do things just because story happens. And they're not trying yeah. to think about connecting the dots right. and making it go on. Right. Uh, uh, it's like it's like like I look, look, remember when um when Obi Wan uh after we watched uh after we watched Third Sister Parkour against the parkour <laughs> parkour <laughs> parkour we parkour. watched him do parkour across the roof and 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 Obi Wan and and Leia got to the ship and it took off and I was like oh man what's gonna happen they they got to take over the controls of the ship because they're on a planet right they got there so there must be a star cruiser or something. In space, she knows that they're leaving. Hey, listen, there's this real slow ass barge. <laughs> Go get them. There's this, there's this real slow ass barge on automated systems right. about to like lumber your way. It's the one trailing smoke and dripping oil. Yeah, will you shoot that bastard, please? Like, come on. And it just it just kind of goes and they're gone. I'm like, oh, the yeah. story has to happen. It doesn't right. make any sense that they I got see. away like that. Like, okay, great. She didn't get to the ship, but shoot it down. I agree. I agree. It was We're, just weird. I agree. I agree. We got this whole blockade over fucking Naboo, and yet you can't get one cruiser to shoot this right. guy out. I mean, even sky. when they got like, off the, the snow hell? planet, even when they got off a of hawk and the Empire Strikes Back, they had to shoot lasers to try to distract right. the, the other ship so that they went, the first transport is away. <laughs> but, like, this ship is like, this. We these people are, Obi-Wan and Little Leia are escaping in like galactic chitty chitty bang bang. <laughs> <laughs> And totally nobody agree. shoots it down. Totally agree. Totally nobody agree. shoots it down. She's looking at this slow thing limber up in space. Like I said, trail of smoke, dripping oil. They can't control it. Because right. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're going to have to reprogram something to jump into hyperspace or else they're going to be shot down. Yeah. Or they'll just limber away. Right. Or we'll just kind of go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like that scene from Austin Powers. 
uh, aren't we going to watch him? No, 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 no. We're just going to hope it works out for the <laughs> yeah, best. Yeah, we're just <laughs> you know, it, it's the old out. Adam West Batman. Yeah, where they that, set up this elaborate trap is. and like, let's go. I think they're going to die. Right. <laughs> oh no, Batman has a lighter in his pocket. He'll get out of this, okay? <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, th- it's it's things like that. I'll be mentioning that along the way of tonight because it happens so many times. Things that I call happen. Oh, because a story. We just Jesse. Have to- do we have a? Uh, did we create a specific topic topic about Qui Gon? Because I want to just discuss that we, before we, we have dump it, into data and, and right Obi Wan. So, in the interest of time, because again, we want to, we really want to talk about what was amazing in this show. We've kind of picked it apart now. Now we're going to move into what was amazing. But I got one more thing that I just look. All right. I think that most people. So I'd be careful to choose my words. I don't want to throw around assertions of absolute. But I think it's reasonable to state that most people would agree that Qui-Gon is one of the greatest Jedis ever. I mean, he just is, right? And, you know, we got him in one movie. And you bring him in a cameo. And he was basically Marcus from Indiana Jones, where he just shows up at the end like, follow me, I know the way. I'm like, why the <laughs> fuck did you even put him in this? He did nothing. Absolutely he, nothing. What he was the a, hell? Yeah, he was freaking he was freaking Jedi Moses. Nothing. You know, nothing. <laughs> just, just follow me. Come on. But Let's walk across I mean, this desert. But that's I mean, on one that's... aspect, there is there is a purpose to it. And 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 this is something I caught. Maybe it's because I read into things too much. Um, oh, I definitely like, do. Everybody knows that. <laughs> Yoda, Yoda, at the end of episode three, said, "You know, like I found a new way to communicate with your master." And he's like, "Quagon, yes." And then he's like, "And I think there's something to him coming full circle with himself, uh, with the whole Anakin thing that makes him now able to see him." And that's why he's like, "Took you long enough." Like, yeah, I, think- I do like that. The- Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say. It, because he rejected being a Jedi, now he's back to being a Jedi because he did the right thing. He came for he came full circle with the Anakin thing, and now his senses are clear. Now he can see his master. Yeah, and I, I think that makes sense because the other thing I noticed too is like at the end of the Empire Strikes Back. I'm sorry, at the end of Return of the Jedi, yeah. when when all of the Force ghosts appear, like only one that can see them is Luke. Nobody else yeah. can see right, them. Right, like right. you know, you didn't you didn't see Han Solo go? Oh, what the hell? He didn't do that. <laughs> Where are all these people? <laughs> you know, he walked uh, freaking out with all the ghosts and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only person <laughs> that saw him out. saw them. Right. The only person that saw them was was Luke. Right. But um, I tell you one thing. I wish they they, they I wish they hadn't done. I know we're talking about things we like. I do love seeing Qui Gon, but I also wish that they didn't mention him at all. Because from the moment that he was crying out to him, you know, like, oh God, oh God, you, your brain already, goes, oh, we're going to see him. Yeah, right, right, right. You know? next but one. if he hadn't mentioned him at all, and then at the end he appears and goes, ah, now you've gotten rid of that baggage, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, now you can see me. Let's go. That I think perfect. that would have been a better surprise. Yeah, it's almost like they spoiled it. You know, yeah. I love the speculation online about will he appear, will he appear. But the moment that Obi Wan said his name in the first episode, I'm like, you knew you were going to see him at some point. We knew we were right. going to see it, and yeah. that kind of circles back to my whole point of if we didn't spend a lot of time on other things, we could have maybe had a little more Qui Gon in there actually doing something to help Obi Wan. I mean, I get the whole you figured it out on your own. Now you can see me. Great, I get it. But goddamn, he's one of the greatest Jedi's. Let's fucking see him a little bit more. Like it mm-hmm. just it really bummed me out, man. I, I mm-hmm. really wanted like I love Qui-Gon Jinn, man. That's mm-hmm. probably why I saw episode one six times in the theater, because Qui-Gon was dope and he'll always be dope. And it's just like, ah, you really? He's just kind of like follow me and that's it. And they go in the sunset. I'm like, okay, I wanted more, but whatever. Well, that's crazy. I saw episode one about six times too, but it was for Jar Jar. But that's me. 
<laughs> Phil's favorite character. He loves the hijinks of Jar Jar. Absolutely <laughs> loves it. And then you know what Phil's favorite part was? Phil's favorite part was where Jar Jar literally handed the galaxy to Emperor Palpatine. Yeah. Everybody. I like the theory of I like the theory of evil Jar Jar. Have you heard that theory? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's funny because when you go back and look at the movies, and then more importantly, when you watch special features, and there's this one part where George Lucas says, like, we really got to get Jar Jar right. He's the key to all of these movies. He, you, if you look at special features, I watch a special that feature where George Lucas says that, so you know that Jar Jar was supposed to be major. And then he wasn't because he, wasn't he because, talked weird and he right. stepped in the poopy. So, yeah. you know, we kind of <laughs> got tired of that. All right. Oh, we've, really? got, we've got <laughs> 10 minutes left. Are you, guys no ready to, are you guys ready to talk about the good stuff? We've been waiting for the good yeah. stuff. Jesse, change that category. There we we're, go. We're on okay. higher ground today. All right. So I've been doing a lot of talking. I want Jesse and Phil to talk more about this. So I'm just going to say real quick, I fucking loved it. Everything with Obi-Wan and Vader was exactly what I fucking wanted. I love the final battle. I love reducing Vader to shit. And I absolutely love the the dialogue that they have where, you know, and there's time. Like, I've rewatched the final episode probably five or six times. And especially the clip of the final battle at least two, three dozen times. Every time I watch it, I'm like, ah, they're going to patch it up. Here it is. One of them's going to, oh, wait, never mind. Because, no, that doesn't happen. But every time I'm like, it's there. There it is. It, this is where it's going to happen. They're going to bury the hatchet. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, that doesn't happen. And it's, 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 Anakin Skywalker is one of the most fucking tragic characters, like, ever written. And what Obi-Wan series does so well is put that, in your face to where you cannot ignore it when that helmet is damaged and you see anakin in there and he's talking i'm like i fucking feel so sorry for you i almost love you more than i do obi-wan at this point <laughs> yeah. like because you know what happened mm -hmm. and you know it was a lie you know he's being used but you know he's mm -hmm. gone too far and he can't come back if he wanted to he can't because he's too far deep into it and he knows it and he knows he's being used and he's pissed off about that and he can't come back, even though you want him to. And, dude, when Obi-Wan starts crying, when he's apologizing to him, I'm just like, oh, my God. Like, it hits you in the field. Man, I tear up sometimes. It, it, that, that was incredible. That was everything I've ever wanted since I've had conscious memory watching Star Wars. I mean, I was born in 81, so at the end of the original trilogy. But I don't have a memory to where I wasn't watching these films. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to see this, and they fucking delivered on it. You guys mm -hmm. talk now. Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 that scene, I'm glad it happened in this show. It, it's almost the encounter, not necessarily that exact thing, but it's almost like a little extra bite that I actually wanted in episode three. You know, mm -hmm. I really wanted, I really wanted to feel that sense of brothers. Yes. You know, go, one going with the Cain and Abel. You know, I wanted mm -hmm. to feel that. Um, the thing that uh, does, I give, there's really nothing much to say about the battle and the dialogue. You said it, Obi Wan put him in his place. But the thing I like too is, like I said, there's so many things in which the movies and these other TV shows have done to cause like holes. Like I said, mm -hmm. don't you remember? Like I always want to go to every director that does either a new movie or a new show and go, "Hi, before you do anything, watch the original trilogy or get out of the director's chair." Um, <laughs> and and the fact that. You know, one of the lines that people, you know, rightfully had issue with was what they call Obi-Wan lying to Luke, you know? And he's like, he goes, well, so what I said was true uh, from a certain point of view, mm -hmm. puff, puff, pass. You know, it's like, you know, but, but now it gained some clarity because right. Obi-Wan was now, you realize from this battle with Obi-Wan and Vader that, that Vader told him that. And, it, and it, I don't know if anybody noticed this, but throughout this series, Obi-Wan refers to him as Anakin. Yes. But the moment that he said, you didn't do this, I kill Anakin. And the next time Obi-Wan refers to him, he refers to him as Vader. Darth. That's interesting. Yeah. Darth. I'm sorry, Darth. Yes. He stops calling him. He stops yep. calling him Anakin. Anakin and, it, it, and, and Anakin stopped and said, no, you know, Vader killed Anakin, so stop talking about Anakin. So mm -hmm. when he turns around and tells Luke, 
your father betrayed and I mean, uh, Vader betrayed and killed your father. That gave it some subtext. It gave Absolutely. it some weight. And now yep. it doesn't just feel like a lie. And it comes back to the thing where, too, you don't necessarily want to, like, tell your, your this guy something awful about about their parent. Right, you know what I mean? right, right. Um, you know, and when people go, why didn't you tell them? I'm like, well, you know, I was thinking before, well, you just don't want to, you know, right. Tell, you don't want to tell this young kid that your dad's Hitler, you know? Right, but now, right, right. But, but now they added this extra, extra layer to make it really like he wasn't just sparing Luke's feelings. Obi-Wan kind of took, I mean, uh, 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 Anakin took Obi-Wan off the hook by saying, you didn't do this. Mm -hmm. I did this. Right. And that was like... Right. That to it me, slapped, man. because because it's like because like I've seen rocks being thrown, I've seen you know spinning the little floating stands, yeah. I've seen lightsaber battles, I've watched them go at it hard. This is yeah. some great choreography, but it was the deeper meaning that was established in their relationship and how it gave some depth to the continuity of the original trilogy and this franchise. That really moved me it was and great it delivered it absolutely delivered and, and what it did for me is the darth vader character has now been forever changed for me and i was kind of going through this back in 05 when episode three came out but when i watched the original trilogy it was still darth vader to me even though i'm like okay it's anakin in the suit but i'm still seeing darth vader not anymore right. now i'm seeing anakin in the suit the mm -hmm. Darth Vader character has been completely changed for me. Mm -hmm. And I went back and watched the original trilogy and it was different. Like mm -hmm. shit was different for me mm -hmm. when he was talking things mm -hmm. that he was doing. I'm like, Oh God, this is all changed now that now I'm actually seeing Anakin in the suit. Mm -hmm. All of this has mm -hmm. a completely different meaning. And I, I loved it. I'm here for that. I, I yeah. love it. No, oh, there, there's one more thing too that I, I think it gave weight to with respect to the original trilogy. <clears throat> when he goes, when what, what I can't remember the line exactly, but it's like when we must first last met. Uh, I was, but you were the master. I was, but the learner. Now I, I am the master. Yes. Well, that makes sense because because Obi Wan took him to school. He sure did. Twice. Obi Wan took him to school, and it goes, yeah. you, 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 you're, you're not the master. I just so you know, do, 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 do. bye, Felicia. You know, right, and, right, right. and he left. Got it. And and so the last time they saw each other, Vader got his butt handed to him twice. He, he was still put in his death. place like he was a student. So now when they have the fight on the Death Star, that line now makes sense. It does. It really, truly does, and it just. It, the relationship building that they did in this series is the meat of it, and that's the payoff. Both oh, both confrontations with with Vader and Obi Wan, mm -hmm. but obviously more so the second one. Like I I can't get over seeing Anakin in in the suit in the helmet with the helmet damaged. I love the off and on audio where sometimes yeah I like that. Sometimes it yeah. was it was James Earl Jones. Mm -hmm. who did record for that by the way it wasn't ai he recorded and i love that because that's forcing us to accept the transition because up to that point i'm like it's still fucking anakin and they're like no and we're gonna prove it to you this mm -hmm. is transitional he's mm -hmm. fucking done it's mm -hmm. now darth vader and you have to accept that mm -hmm. and man that did wonders for me mm -hmm. i mean Darth Vader has always been my favorite character, but now he's even more my favorite character because it's two. Mm -hmm. It's Anakin mm -hmm. and Darth Vader, mm -hmm. and now I can experience them both at the same time, or I can experience them as two separate characters, mm -hmm. and my God, that's, that, mm -hmm. that's done so much for me. Something else, too, thinking about, like, just if you think about anybody, anybody that's maybe famous in, in their career, you know, sometimes, like, somebody will be an actor or actress, you see them all the time, and you're like, hey, this new person, they're in a lot of movies now. But if you hear their story, they've been doing it for 10, 15 years. Right, they finally right. got their break. Uh, uh, I look at this as, like, it's interesting that, like, like Obi-Wan in the beginning did not know that Darth Vader was Anakin. Yes. Which makes yes. me go, wait a minute. Like, from my perspective, the galaxy knows who Darth Vader is, but this is like Darth Vader before he gets his fame. This is Darth Vader before he gets his breakout movie. You know what I mean? This yeah. is, you know, the thing that puts him on the map. And so I also look at this moment in, 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 uh, in Obi-Wan Kenobi between Obi-Wan and Vader 
as that moment that said to him, I got to turn this up to 11. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was trying to be, uh, but now everybody's going to know who I am. Right. I'm going to crank this up. I'm going to get rid of all of these inquisitors and I'm yeah. going to be, you know, the, the, the person in charge. You're going to feel me. My name will be known throughout the galaxy. Mm-hmm. I look at this as the motivating factor. He got his butt handed to him again. Again. Yep, sure did. And it just seems to me, this is me reading into it, but this is the thing that now makes his name the name of fear throughout the galaxy. He, yep. if not that, that he's that guy that you see in Rogue One. Absolutely, he's that, man. He's the guy that you see in Rogue One, and it took nine years of him like going, "I'm just gonna, you know, I'm here to like swing sabers and chew bubble gum, and I'm out of bubble gum," <laughs> and that's. Like the motivating factor, like you yeah. know what I mean, you, you know, and you hear sports figures say like, "I was doing okay," but then we, you know, we we got our butts beat by the team that we should have won, and then all of a sudden, Michael Jordan is born. You know what I mean? It's like it's like I gotta crank it up. I thought I was doing good, but I wasn't. I really gotta turn it up, and that to me was something that I took away from this because, again, like you said, you're looking at him, you're seeing Annie, you feel bad bad for him, and but all of a sudden you know that he's going to become this guy who's feared. He's not feared. Like, I mean, like, everybody doesn't know. He is feared, but, like, he's feared because he does stuff. Like, when Vader landed on that planet, when he went through just throwing people around. Yeah, it was awesome. I loved it. Right. People weren't going, oh, snap, yo, it's Vader. They right. kind of went, oh, wait, there's somebody there. Who's Boom. this guy? Oh, oh now shit, I'm scared. Did you see what he did? <laughs> he did that thing. But now, but now when we get to, like, the uh, Rogue One and A New Hope, now he is the guy where when he walks in the room, like, people are peeing their pants. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the motivating factor that got him there. He's choking out coworkers in staff meetings. I'd be scared right. of that exactly. motherfucker. Like, right. I don't want to be in a meeting with that guy. I don't want to get choked. Last thing I want to do is get promoted. Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to get killed if I become a... I'll talk to you later, Admiral Moore. Oh, hell right. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no? Could I be a janitor or something? No. <laughs> right, I want to be away from this guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, I know we're, we're running short of time, but I wanted to kind of kind of also tie together with the, the whole hologram conversation with Palpatine because I thought that was great too because that solidified because he's basically like yo Obi-Wan's not dead is this going to be a problem because if it is I'm gonna find somebody else. and Vader was like it's not a problem like, Palpatine is up there going look I'm on LinkedIn right now right 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 <laughs> like this is not going to be a problem I'm good I'm number two don't worry about it like but again that just that solidifies the transition you know? I want to see Robot Chicken do Palpatine's interview <laughs> That's what I want to see. <laughs> so it says here you've maimed and killed. <laughs> oh shit! And that'll be every interview he's going to end it with. Is and he, he's problem. like, he's like, well, I, I'm having problems with my employees. I'm thinking about filling the position. So tell me how many people you pillaged. You know, I want to see <laughs> Palpatine's interview to replace Vader. <laughs> that would be messed up. I love it though. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh so I God. found your resume here on Staff Me Up. <laughs> <laughs> could you meet me? Could you meet me at the opera tonight? I need to tell you a story <laughs> of Goth City. These, balls, these, <laughs> these balloons of 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 soap blowing around, and we're gonna have this really cryptic conversation that's gonna allude to something bad that's gonna happen to you two months from now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I like I said, it. it, it I, I, I like I said, it, it just. All the things you said, John, all the things you said, Jesse, but then it also, I love how, because I love the original trilogy. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, and I like the prequels. And, the, the, it just, and for those people who have, people who have issues with the, the prequels, there are problems, but, you, but one thing is for sure, you understand clearly that George Lucas had a vision, yeah. he knew what he had done, and, and, and he stayed within, within that, that with, with the exception of, the babies being born and Panama dying. He stayed within that, uh, the world that he had established. Yeah. And I just don't like the fact that people are now doing things which challenge the continuity of the franchise. And I love the fact that this episode and this scene said, 
I respect the franchise. Yep, I, I respect the original trilogy. Totally agree. You know? And you know, I I do agree with you on the, on the prequels, Phil. As I get older and as the years tick on, I I do appreciate the prequels more and more. Yeah, Episode Two is still rough to get through. Nobody's denying that. Yeah, there's some bad dialogue, but to your point, it was a well thought out, executed you know story from point A to point B, and. I do like that a lot of the new Star Wars coming out is kind of referencing or connecting the prequels. Mm -hmm. And I respect that. And I appreciate mm -hmm. that. And look, I'm not going to sit here and be toxic or shit on Disney or anything like that. But, you know, it's it, compared to this newer trilogy we have and what they're doing relative to the prequels. I'm, I'm definitely going to pick the prequels over that. Look, I love the force awakens, but you know, it, there was something that was fundamentally missing that even though the prequels aren't perfect, they have. It was and a vision. It as was a I get older, vision. I can respect that more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a connective through line, uh, like it or not, executed, bland acting, bad directing, whatever. But when you think of it as a story, right. and that's the thing. This is, I mean, we didn't call it, I never referred to it as the, the Skywalker saga <laughs> until we got to like episode eight. Eight and somebody put that label on it, but right, right, right. But but it was it. It it was the Skywalker saga, and 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 that was the through line that connected the prequels to the original trilogy. And and even when I see things happen like in the Mandalorian, that connects it and brings in elements of the Clone Wars and Rebels. Yeah, I love that. It's saying yeah. we know this happened. It's real. We're trying to bring it in and make sure it 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 connects. Yes, and I love that. I, I love that. I, I like the retconning that's being done yeah. uh, with, to, to this franchise. Because, you know, listen, we can all admit that it used to be a time where it used to be a time where if you like Star Wars, um, it was a great thing to sit around and talk about with your friends. Mm -hmm. But now it has become a toxic topic it because, of, of, because of all of the directions that it's gone to. And I feel that there's a handful of people um, that are doing some of these new shows that are trying to put a band aid and some neosporin yeah. on this on this toxicity I and agree. like you know say okay maybe this wasn't an idea that anybody ever thought of but if we introduce this it'll be a connected thread and it'll make this weird detour that someone did it'll it'll make it line up it's yeah. like fixing the you know, you, you know, it, it's like Loki. The timeline is going to skew. You got to bring the timeline <laughs> bring back. back to a single thread. No matter yeah. what your show is, no matter what your animated series, no matter what your book is, we got to get you all on the same timeline. Yeah. Not this person's and this person's and this person's. And it's like entirely because we all know the original trilogy happened. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. That was really well stated and thought out, Phil. Mm -hmm. I think that really kind of connected all the dots there. That was great. Yep. Oh man, what a what a crazy conversation! I can't believe it's already been an hour. I mean, I feel like we could go on and on and on about this, um, but I'm just gonna say it again. Like that shit in the final episode. Like I'm telling you, it hits me in the. I just watched it right before we started, and I'm mm -hmm. just like, oh my god like the way that that makes me feel when i watch that i mm -hmm. just want more of that so if they do a second season which i hope they don't i feel like the story is told i feel like this is a great bridge and then it leads to episode seven really nicely but if they really feel compelled to do a second season because i love you and mcgregor as obi-wan then just let's focus on the obi-wan anakin thing a little bit more and not mm -hmm. so much these other distractions even though i liked them i just want them in their own thing and not taking away from the anakin obi-wan thing mm -hmm. i agree yeah yeah i i don't really think i want to see a season two i don't I, I think i think though if they did do a season two i would love to see the hunt for the inquisitors like so oh, Obi Wan gets okay. involved in that. He's taken off of Tatooine, whatever the storyline is, for, for for whatever reason. I, I I don't know, but you know, he's taken off Tatooine for some. Wouldn't it be great if he's the one that like, like? Oh no, this, this was suck. I was even ready to say, what if he's the one that like finds Grogu and then takes the Grogu to where eventually the Mandalorian found them? But no, that's just fan service. I slapped myself for that. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves Grogu, so it's not out of the realm of possibility. It's not but, out but, of the realm. But, but I would like to see him get off Tatooine. The whole thing takes place 
off Tatooine so we don't have to worry about him contaminating yeah. the, the relationship that we know he's supposed to have or the relationship he's not supposed to have with with uh, with Luke and and maybe connected somehow with with the with the uh, inquisitors invaders rampage to execute them totally um, agree. yeah that would be cool that would but, be cool, but other man. than that I'd be fine without a season two yeah uh, same here I just leave it like we got th- that again I can't oh, say good. it enough we got that beautiful piece yeah. of cinema at the yeah. end and honestly I don't want that fucking tainted just right. leave it where yeah. it is and I can watch that clip every day and maybe some days I'll cry maybe other days I won't but it's just god damn that was so perfect I just mm-hmm. I don't want that messed up anyway well, like I said, we all know, like I said, that Favreau and, and Kennedy and all of those at Disney Plus, they're watching this show right now. So, hey, stop putting a hat, <laughs> stop putting a hat on, on a hat. Leave Star Wars alone. Move on to the next thing. Leave this alone. Don't put a hat on a hat. Obi-Wan did it beautifully. Leave it alone. There it is. Exactly. And Favreau <laughs> can cast me in the uh, next season of Mandalorian. To start I'll be a droid. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll, I'll get in the droid costume. No problem. I, dude, <laughs> I, I, look, I can see you as a droid, Jesse. And, and John, I can see you as like, uh, uh, what's, what's the guy? Uh, Dexter Jester. I can oh, see you as like, chef. I, can, I can see you like, oh, here we go. What do you want? Ah. You introduced me to a chef at a diner in the middle of Coruscant, like on Cleveland Avenue. Like, what the no, hell? No, 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 no. It's the only place where everybody comes. It's like D Space Nine. It's the only place I to get your it. last D-Space meal. It's, it's the only place to get that last meal. You know, like when you're on the highway and it goes, last gas for 120 miles, you better stop here. That's your joint. Dude, it's the cheers of the Star Wars guy. Exactly. There That's what is. I'm talking about. There That's what I want. And you're okay. the and, and Jesse's the robot like like Carla that works there. And and me, I, I'm I'm well, I'm sexy. I want to be Sam alone. Uh, <laughs> make the show. Come on, Cabro, Kennedy. There it is. Here it is. Cabrero. We're here on the show. Three what we need to do. What we need to do. But, uh, (laughs) hey, that's all the time we got today. Uh, Phil, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the show, man. You are a living rock star legend for coming on and doing this with us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Man, I always love chatting with y'all on 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 the on the uh, the uh, the show or off the show. Um, you know, I met John, we became friends. Uh, so listen, anytime I can sit down at the table, even if it's the kid table, <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> I will, man. I will. And uh, I want to thank Vance, uh, Darth, Ryan, uh, and uh, Shep. Thank you, and Ted for uh, tuning in and blowing up the. Uh, the comment section. I love you guys for it. Uh, also, I want to thank uh, Vance, as he is the producer who produces the goods. That's our dude. He makes it happen. Thank you so much, man. And tune in every Wednesday. We'll be here at the Grown-Ups Table talking about the latest pop culture that's uh, in our universe. But until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the Grown-Ups Table. Thank you. and Have an awesome night. Night,